Hey everybody, welcome Hello. to Sunday Tea Book, episode 22, as I reach in and work on bringing... We had a charging failure for our wireless mics. That is the problem identified. So we will be using this. Hopefully you guys can hear us loud and clear now out in YouTube land, um, Instagram Live. You guys were lucky that you could hear us, but you're unlucky because you can't see the beautiful pictures of the tea that I'm about to throw on the screen on the YouTube side. <laughs> so maybe you can just show them the tea on through the guy mm -hmm, one and absolutely. i will give the youtube people and we'll show you guys on youtube later the real leaf too but here's what we're brewing today a lovely rogue way as we dive into the uh oolong section of our uh sunday tea book right we're having some rogue way and as you can see we put a very generous amount in this yeah about uh, 10 grams about mm -hmm. two-thirds full mm -hmm. and on youtube you can see the liquor color and a bit of the web page where we have uh, the full description of the tea that is about to open up there mm -hmm. right there is the full description so check that out i um, painstakingly wrote that um, and down below you've got all the additional info about the when it was harvested and where it's from and all that cool mm. stuff so that's for the instagram people that was on the youtube stream Sunday Tea Book, guys, what is it all about? Sunday Tea Book is where we take books, articles, and papers that are full, full, full of great information, and they're not translated into English, or if they are, it's a little bit dubious or confusing, and we go over them with you. And why don't we just translate them and post them on our blog? Everything okay? I have a flying hair sideways, almost poked you. I know, that would have hurt. <laughs> Anyway, well, we yeah. why don't we just post the finished translations? The reason is uh, because over the last five years, working with Jen and diving into sort of the details of Chinese tea and its culture and how it's processed and all this cool stuff, actually going over this stuff has been very enlightening for me. And you guys suggested that we do something like this and we realized this has so many benefits that we've been doing this for 22 whole episodes. So that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Mm -hmm. And we are going to continue with my mom's book, my mom's book, uh, Jian Li Wu, that's her name, <laughs> uh, China Tea. It's a great, uh, what? The book isn't called Jian Li Wu. Oh, sorry, it's right. called uh, China Tea. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a teasing. great uh, uh, basic intro mm. book to Chinese tea from the Chinese perspective. On the other hand, for those of you who are uh, pretty into tea already, it's a great book to uh, put us on the same page because there are so many misunderstandings mm -hmm. or different translations and mm -hmm. confusions Terminology and Terminology confusion. Absolutely, um, and that's how we're trying to... Even uh, correct some misinformation that kind of sneaks into the tea world sometimes. Yes, mm. yes. And uh, through the live translation, we correct that and you guys also help us out with uh, English or oh, yeah. better or more accurate translations. It has been it's really fun. more than a couple times. Absolutely. So. And a very rewarding experience for us too. So uh, today is all about Wulong. Yeah, we're super excited to dive into this next section. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, way, the way we're going to break down this book, China Tea by Jen Li Wu, as Jen said, uh, her mom, our tea consultant, is already translated, but the translation, as you'll see, uh, leaves a bit to be desired. I'm gonna pull the translation right up on the screen for those of you on YouTube, you're all set. For those of you on Instagram, you, oh, Diversified is on Instagram, but I think I saw her on YouTube, oh, maybe, yeah, already on YouTube too. So jump on over to YouTube, which you already are, some of you, and there you're gonna get the full experience. Uh, we're gonna drop off on Instagram, actually right about now. Whoa, my hand, mm -hmm. grab Instagram. <laughs> And uh, I'll say bye to you guys for now, and hopefully see you on the YouTube side. We are going to dive into episode 22, Oolong Tea, Sunday Tea Book. Right. Sorry, I Ray. had to do some special effects. <laughs> Renee Pretz, I hope I didn't um, totally mispronounce your word. Greetings to everyone from Germany. Late evening here. Wow. Hey, Germany, welcome. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Who is that? Rainer Pretz. Rainer? Rainer? Okay. I don't know Rainer how to Pretz. say it. Maybe I don't know Rainer? Rainer? I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just putting on a little German accent. I hope I hope I don't sound like a jerk. <laughs> anyway, welcome. It's super awesome to have folks from all over the all over the world. Really, really fun. Um, what did I want to show? Oh, well, we get the tea brewing. Last time we did a live, we did a little tea trivia. He's obsessed with I'm that. a little bit, I hope you guys like it. We're gonna warm up today with a little bit of tea trivia to warm us into the oolong section. Let's get started. Bam. Tea <laughs> trivia, question one. 
take and, and what you guys do just shout out the answer in the chat uh, or just throw the letter down you can already read the question on your screen so if you know the answer go ahead and shoot it out for heaven's sake there's no um, there's no cash money reward it's just, for fun. it's just for fun so take a guess if you're not sure and you want to be funny put down the letter e it's okay right <laughs> we're just we're just loosening up getting the tea brewed getting i noticed js is throwing on the rogue way he wasn't sure what to brew so he uh he heard what we're drinking and he's oh, cool. he's throwing down oh smell that <sighs> i'm so thirsty that's got that mineral See the mineral cinnamon yeah give him the brew cam let's switch over to the brew cam while they think about the answer to this Right in, stuff it right in the camera. Right very in, right hard. in, tight, tight. There very hot. This is yeah. very hot. But that's a really nice color. Nice, like ruby orange. Mm -hmm. Focus, wow. God. Focus. God has to be. Oh, yeah. Just a back a little bit. I think the yeah. too close was no, too no, stressful. No, it can go super close. Uh, I tested uh, it with the leaf. Okay, okay. Anyways, it's a beautiful, clear radiance. You can always stuff I it in the Mac camera, that. too. All right, right, guys, do we have some answers? We have two B guesses. That's cool. That's cool. The correct answer is indeed B and C. Take one inhales from the region of and C. Not Ottawa Jeopardy. <laughs> right? I shouldn't. Ha I should have put Ottawa just for fun. But uh, it doesn't come from any of those other places. So on to question two, guys. Question two, which region is known for its spectacular cliffs? Is it A, Wuyi, B, Yunnan, C, Tangmu, or D, Taimu? Ooh. <laughs> This is the real one, right? She didn't see these questions yet. So, I didn't see those So if yet. any of them are just wrong, she's gonna, she won't let that slip, okay? We'll make sure that we... I don't unintentionally misinform you guys. I tried to keep it pretty fun mm. and light. Oh, man, that is amazing. So which region is known for its spectacular cliffs? Oh, hint, this tea comes from there. I am sipping the flavor of the cliffs right now. Mineral, that gentle hint of cinnamon. Mm. Oh, I'm oh, I suddenly love how relaxed. You, I was I a know. little bit um, jazz, overly jazz. I was a little bit yeah, overly <laughs> excited, guys. I hope I didn't scare anyone away. Super hot. I'm gonna be jazzed again in a minute, so don't worry. Yeah, I just love closing the mouth and breathe out to have that a whole. The aroma comfortably, like, you know, it's not punch, pungent, like, mm. a, like, a, like a, a cheap perfume kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. us know how the quality is, guys, out there. Yay, back again, and I can hear you. Yay, oh, that's perfect. Awesome. Okay, um, let oh. us, feel free to shout out. AJS is back. Welcome back. Sorry, guys, we had a little internet burp, mm. uh, a big one, actually. And... Um, <laughs> Let us know um, about the quality of the stream and whatever, because mm -hmm. we had to jump down to a lower network. But anyway, we were in the middle of uh, tea trivia. We had uh, we're gonna try and dive right back in. Yes. Right. Get that over with. And yeah, uh, thank you for being patient with us. Yeah, thanks for coming on back, mm -hmm. uh, Rainer from Germany. Super good to have you back. And JS, good to see you again. Okay, so we were on question two. Which region is known for its spectacular cliffs? And the big hint was we're drinking the tea right now. I just want to say something to uh, Rainer because uh, we, we're trying to pronounce his, uh, his or her name. And he said, uh, good enough. When you say that, I know we're far from that. <laughs> because that's what happens when you know, people try to pronounce my name. I was like, good enough, good enough. <laughs> right? Right, Zen? <laughs> yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Okay, D's Versified says, no worries. The bane of mm. every streamer. What was the answer for the first question? Great question. Let's right. just quickly pull it up. The answer was uh, B, B and C. For anyone who missed it, um, JS was I asking. I thought you said B and C. No, B and C. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could say the answer so they get... NC. There we go. NC. N so C. the answer is the letter B and the place is called NC. Da -da -da -da. And the, put that I think Rainer has made her submission for question two, which is A, and that is 100% correct. Way to go. Wu Yi is known for its spectacular cliffs, <laughs> and sometimes even rock tea is known as cliff tea. Mm, mm. And if you want to see those cliffs, you can check out a vlog we have where we were in Wu Yi. We got an absolute downpour on us, and it was magical. 
The rain came down, all the little paths we were walking in turned into streams, little brooks, and you could see the water coming over the cliff and really and coming through out the granite for hours afterwards. And the whole canyon, canyon like the 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 the, the valley, the, the valley and mm. stuff is only tea bushes and three of us. It was really yeah. like a yeah, special. Yeah, there was not moment. a soul except mm. Jian Li, Jen, and I. It was really magic. Mm -hmm. All right, so question number three: This famous tea was gifted to President Nixon. A. Jasmine Green. B. Jun Jun Mei. Oh, this C, is a good one. 1945 Puar. This is a good or one. Or D, the Hong Pao. <laughs> Lost you for a bit. Yes, we yes, got uh, we back. got disconnected by the evil internet. That's uh, a connection that, goblins. Right. But now we're back. I don't know if you guys are here that bit we're talking about. That could be a sign that uh, tea trivia is not so welcome. So it can't be. It can't be. Let me know but if you guys so like tea trivia. But he's so obsessed with that. Uh, he last night like a, like. A, Pretty would, late. Suddenly, pretty I'm late. making a tea trivia for tomorrow's live. He's really into that and yeah. look into uh, softwares that uh, you guys can play like more interactively. I think and automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. kind of thing. So, I'm looking uh, around for that. So, guys, so Cindy, you nailed it. D is right. Jinjun May was gifted to President Nixon, and I think the way the story goes is no, he, no, no, Da Hong Pao. Uh, sorry, D. I said D Da Hong Pao. I said D Jin Jun Mei. That's wrong. It's D Da Hong Pao, which right. Cindy get, which Cindy answered correctly. And uh, B is a good guess. That's a super nice tea. But I don't think the maker had invented Jin Jun Mei when this gifting happened. I'm not 100 percent no, sure about that. Not yet. So that was a little Jin bit Jin of a is too good guess, Rainer. But it was a purpose. I did that to be a little bit of a trick because I knew it might lure some people in because it is indeed a very nice tea. Both of them come from Wu Yi, so. Right, and the legend is is that Nixon was a little bit uh, so unimpressed. The, unimpressed, and the tea he got was one of the last harvests from the mother bush, is how the story goes. Um, so the advisors had to tell him, sir, you need to be impressed. This is a really million dollar tea. The story is more like a... Uh, Oh, he wasn't impressed because of the amount of tea, and China was a big tea com uh, com mm. company country, and uh, he only get a little bit, like uh, how many grams, fifty grams, or something, really small mm. amount, and they were like, oh, so cheap, and they were like, uh, oh, the the total you have half of the yearly production of this uh, bush that nobody else have access uh, to, so. Right. Uh, it, and just a, even to jump in with a cultural note right away is it does say something right away about an important thing to understand with Chinese tea culture is that quantity is always revered over quantity. Look at Yixing teapots. Mm. It's not a brand new one, the latest technology that makes people fancy. It's one that's old and cared for. It's, that's the kind of spirit of Chinese tea. Quality, not quantity. On to question four. <laughs> What is the name of the first oolong tea? Is it A. Shui Xian, B. Ba Xian, C. Ai Jiao, did I spell that right? Yeah. Or D. Tae Guan Yin. All right, let's check out the comments while they uh, think about this. Mm -hmm. My name is pronounced like Rai N Air, Ryan Air, an old Germanic male name. Mm. Ah, Rai oh. N Air. Rai N Air. Rai N Air. I hope I'm saying that better. Thanks for uh, look. I really appreciate that you took the time to explain that to Thank us. Thank you, Reiner. I didn't. I didn't Reiner. say that Reiner. to uh, force you to explain that because mm. I had that and I remember my professor forced me to say that mm. and he repeated and took a little time in the class and I was just saying my name. So I was at a certain point. Good enough is okay. I mean, mm. like and you know, JS is letting us know that Kahoot is a Ooh. decent free trivia program. And now Reiner said that I did a pretty decent job on his mm. name. He said really good. I hope it's really? at least pretty decent. Uh, right. Tea trivia is too powerful for the internet. Yes, JS. <laughs> yes. And, so uh, and Cindy loves it. Okay, we don't care what the internet thinks is what we're coming out with right now is we're doing it. Hard question. Maybe C. Okay, mm. good good guess, Cindy. I'll, I won't reveal the answer. Uh, Bassien Reiner is going with maybe B. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks guys for your guesses. Cindy, congratulations with the right answer. Ai Jiao Oolong is the first uh, Oolong tea. Mm -hmm. The one where the guy ran away chasing the deer or whatever the legend <laughs> is. And I don't know if that's one, but, <laughs> but it is the first one. Yeah, Ai Jiao means uh, short bushes, really short mm -hmm. bushes. Uh, literally translated as a short leg. So that wraps up our tea trivia. The idea, guys, is just to have some fun 
and yeah. uh, you know get our kettles on and get settled in before we dive straight in mm -hmm. to the uh, tea book which is precisely where we're heading now all right so mm. let's get started with our exciting section of oolong tea so here's china tea as Jen showed earlier we've got it up on your screen now we've covered a lot guys we've covered a lot we, in terms of part two we've covered all these green teas you see here okay we've covered um, there's a little more green tea here. We've gone through the dark tea section where we covered uh, uh, Shen, Shupuar, Liobao, uh, Fu tea, and Old Paka. And now we are going to dive into Oolong tea, which is going to be an awesome section. So we always keep the Chinese here in case we want to refer to characters or some section that has something interesting. But primarily, we are going to be focusing on the English part. And I'm going to go through it with you right now. I'm going to go to the upper right if I can. Boop, here I am. <laughs> All right, guys. Oolong tea. Oolong tea is called thin tea, also known as wonderful and healthy medicine, which can help digest and urinate. Oolong tea has strong anti-allergic, anti-cancer effect. I'll go for another paragraph and then we'll circle back and unpack this. First sight. Oolong tea, also called aged tea, belongs to the semi-fermented tea. The manufacturing method of oolong is a combination of the production advantages of green tea and black tea. The bottom of the leaf is green and the edge is red. It has a taste of the vibrant of green tea and the mellow of black tea. It was first produced in Muyi Mountain in late Ming and early Qing Dynasty. All right, unpacking time. Oolong tea is called thin tea. So when I first read thin tea, I'm like, is that the shape of the leaf? Or are they trying to tell me it's uh, making me thin? But then when I read more wonderful healthy medicine and help digest, and it's a little bit harsh, but urinate. <laughs> I oh, we might say diuretic or something a little bit more <laughs> soft. Um, but yeah, this is pretty easy to understand, right? It's a it's a good tea. More, yeah, this paragraph is more talking about is a, like a health, health benefits, benefits, right? Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> urinate. Um, yeah, yes. it's a little bit harsh of it. I feel like uh, green tea in the West has really uh, overtaken the market with all of its... Uh, like we, So where we stand, health benefit... Anyway, I shouldn't digress. The point is here to just get through the book. I'll come back to that in a minute, guys. So in first sight, um, aged tea kind of... If you're into tea, you might be confused as I was initially. Uh, is this aged tea? I don't think so. I don't know why. So semi-fermented, though, now starts to ring true. It says semi-fermented or partially oxidized. We prefer partially oxidized fermentation. We reserve for microbial processes, at least in our lingo. It's not technically wrong to say it, but it's a little bit or mm. maybe even a lot confusing. I want to say the, uh, the semi-fermented, it comes directly from Chinese. We call it 半发教场. Mm, good point. The, the interesting thing about this ban, which means the semi at a certain point, but the Chinese ban, which can be half or some or semi. Sometimes it, it also means partially. It doesn't mean 50%. It means mm. partially. So even though in right. Chinese, so, so there will be Chinese people if they don't quite know uh, like, a, 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 like a Chinese in terms of a little deeper uh, word kind of thing, or they don't know the T, they could look at this and translate as a semi or half fermented or mm -hmm. oxidized, but it means partially. Right, partially, meaning that the full spectrum comes into play from just a touch oxidized to pretty heavily oxidized. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great distinction and then something that we see in the book over and over because the translator was is not a tea person, so sometimes yes. she reaches for the translation kind of in the wrong department because mm. some of these terms are, even in Chinese, are specific. Yeah, or it's more like a, uh, it's a less used meaning of the word in the tea right. term. Right. while the, mm -hmm. the regular people would reach for the most familiar like ones. Like bun. Yes. Right, right. And also, I don't know why it's called aged tea. There's no rule, but wulong cha also known as a qing cha. Right. So qing is a kind of a color-ish. Blue. It's similar, yeah. Mm. Greenish blue, and more to the green with a blue tinge kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's a color. And, right. uh, and uh, you know, the thing is, to some people, is uh, the wulong is a tea type, not a tea category, but this kind of a concept of a six tea category didn't fully develop into most people's acceptance, which means uh, if the official version of six tea type is not wulong tea, it's qing cha, 
which matches with the green tea, black tea, like color coded stuff. Mm. Did you notice the wulong is the only one? Yeah, that is right. not. It's not a color or a which, shape like that. Yeah, which is uh, uh, somehow the more popular version. Like mm. most people just call this category wulong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, both are now in our understanding nowadays is interchangeable. Wulong tea is a category. Qing cha equals wulong tea equals a right. category. Right. Right. That's a really finer point that I I didn't even notice. But you're right. It is the only. Non-color、uh, tea category.、Mm. Cool.、Uh, the rest of this paragraph is pretty decent.、Um, it's a it get, takes advantage of the advantages of green and black processes, right? As a because it sits in the、yes. middle in terms of its partial,、mm -hmm. you know, green no oxidation, black tea quote unquote full oxidation, ting、mm -hmm. cha somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom of the leaf and there's some description. The bottom of the leaf again is, is this book means、right. brewed leaf. Right, the brood leaf. It's not the, the Chinese, underside of the leaf, right? Because、mm, the Chinese uh, uh, call that a ye di, it's a tea term. Right, meaning brood leaf. So the brood、yeah. leaf is green with red edge, which is、um, yeah, and has the yeah, and combines the flavors and yeah, and the eye jiao we were just talking about in the first section must have come out of this era. So pretty good.、Mm. Ah, thank you. This is so good. Right, just、uh, relax a mm. bit. Mm. <laughs> so、uh, calming. All right. And JS says he's never noticed that. I think regarding、mm. the、uh, blue tea slash oolong being the only non-color that we use、right. in the English translation、yes. of、uh, of those、and、Ming, tea categories. Late Ming and early Qing Dynasty is around seventeenth century. Hmm. Thanks.、Just I don't know if anybody else knew that already, but I certainly did it. All right. So next section is unique way to produce tea. All right. People love this. The steps, the quote unquote steps. Unique way to produce tea. The steps of procedure of oolong tea are withering, making fixation, stirring fixation, rolling, drying up. Among those steps, making fixation is the key process of forming specific quality characteristics of oolong tea. It is also the basement to establish the fragrance and taste of oolong. After withering, the tea leaves are put in a rocking machine and shaped. Leaves touched each other and bruised leaf cells, thus contributing to promoting activity of the enzyme. Tea also has series of biochemical changing. Leaf cells are damaged, minor oxidation. The leaf edge appears red. The central part of the leaf blade turns from dark green to yellow green. The so-called green leaves with red edges. Okay, let's unpack this a bit too.、Mm. Um, this one's getting into sort of as a if I'm new to tea, I'm going to be pretty lost. I think if, if this is my first foray into actual tea category and stuff,、mm -hmm. I feel like these are some of the typical steps we see for oolong making. Yes. Oh, right. Be sure to click the finished link. Finished.、Yeah. The, translation、uh, link. The link the to the finished translation is down below. Right,、mm. that will have the more of a、uh, how we finished. It's、mm. not as chaotic, and also some of the turns and the sayings I put the Chinese as、yes. well as the Pinyin version, so you know what I'm saying, and、uh, that this part. This part is going to dive into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're getting into sort of the steps, but they were pretty hard even for me to make out.、Um, Because of the, I think just the way they were translated. Fixation,、here. I think. The, the, the Usually, kill green I associate with right, fixing. Right. Right. So let's just、uh, dump all that、uh, translation here. So withering,、yeah. which is what we often say. The second one that making fixation is 做清清 like what we just、mm. mentioned is a、uh, a color, right? It also refers、mm. to tea leaves when we're talking about tea. Uh, so like, uh, 做清 means、uh, making tea leaves, but in the oolong process, sometimes people different regions. Some people call the whole tea process 做清 also appears. But in, right. In, in, Just、uh, in case you weren't confused enough, kind of thing. Right. Uh, but in oolong, 做清 means、uh, the shaking. Okay. Uh, and uh, 炒清 what uh. 炒清 means、uh, pan fry. Yes.、Right. Uh, stirring. Um. Fixation. Fixation, but、uh, if、like、you、yeah, kill green, 
It's actually Chao Ting is a kill grain, but a specific type of a kill grain which is pan fired, like the pan fired uh, green tea, like oolong, right? It has that, but mm. this one is a, a pan fired kill grain, and then it's rolling means rolling, and sometimes you can call that uh, shaping, or mm -hmm. rolling shaping, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last one is drying. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's a little bit easier to, those are the ones we're more, uh, more we hear more typically yeah yeah so among those steps shaking I'm gonna instead of saying making fixation so yeah. then now it's easier to understand shaking is the key process of Absolutely. Wulong okay and is important for the quality characteristics pretty decent mm -hmm. it is also the basement to establish the fragrance so I think it means it's fundamental foundational it's really this is the important step of Wulong tea the uh, shaking yes. okay yeah. and then after withering, so now they're diving because it's the one that after withering the teas are put into the rocking machine and shaped. Mm -hmm. So basically they bruise each other and promoting the activity of enzymes and some biochemical changes. Yes. Yeah, this is pretty good actually. It's a little yeah. bit um, not smooth, but yeah, the, and check Rough, out the finished but translation. Have the idea yeah, that, the idea is preserved yeah. and don't forget to check out the finished translation in the link below. It's kind of handy to follow along, especially for the uh, if you want to see the pinion for those terms. Yes. Um, the central part of the leaf plate. Yeah, this is pretty good. Now, watching carefully, which is part of the um, the steps of tasting that we covered way back early in the book. We always talk about this when we talk about tea. Watching carefully, there are various oolong tea according to different producing places. The color of soup turns from light yellow to bright yellow to beautiful orange and salmon pink. The greener the dry tea is, the lighter the fermented the tea is. Whereas the green, maroon, moist the tea, the darker the soup is. And I'll do charming fragrance too. The charming fragrance. Oolong belongs to the semi-fermented tea and it's particular with its picking. Because it is tea and the degree of fermentation is about 20%, so it remains the green tea's sweet and fragrant fresh. An appropriate degree of fermentation can give, give it the strong fragrance of black tea. Having taken the two, Oolong has one more preference. Mm, okay. That last paragraph was a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the first thing I notice in watching carefully is, is that it, it indicates that the soup turns from light yellow to bright yellow or beautiful orange, but I think it means it ranges from, because it yeah. cannot change color uh, suddenly yeah, it, in your gaiwan. Well, that would be pretty yes. spooky. <laughs> yeah, from different, because they have different locations. However, I just want to point out that uh, it doesn't mean the terroir gives the color. It's just because they come from different places and they oh. have their different uh, uh, a way of processing and stuff. It's not right. saying Tawar gives really the color. Really good distinction. Just to say they have different uh, production uh, areas yeah. and they also have different colors. Right, yeah. right. So that's different techniques is what gives it the different color. I actually decoupled the different producing places mm -hmm. completely okay. from that. Okay, which cool. is good to make a distinction that it's not because it's produced in the east that it's one color and somewhere else that it's another color. Like in Wuyi or in Anxi, it's not. It's the process that makes the color different. And uh, then they talk about the greener that the dry tea is, the lighter f oxidized, fermented it is. Okay, and I'm not sure what they mean by green. I guess green. Brown. I think they meant brown in this case actually, because it's brown maroon. Um, whereas uh, the, I'm not yeah. sure the green maroon moist tea, the darker the soup is. But I guess in general. Moist. Not moist. It's more of a oh. dark luster, dark with the luster, not moist. Like because you moist to think about water. Right? I thought it was brewed leaf. No, no, no this, this one's completely unintelligible. About, uh, yeah. Uh, oolong tea. First thing when you have the oolong tea is to look at it. So the kind of leaf. Yeah, it right. decides how you want to brew it, and the dry leaf gives you, like in terms of intensity, what the liquor color you shoot for is based on the dry leaf right. what you the information right. you get right so the lighter color uh, the dry leaf the greener the uh, the means the oxidation is relatively lighter mm -hmm. and uh, the liquor color will be to the lighter so you right. know how long or how how do you want to brew it right right while the 
darker ones, brownish, like a dark green. Like what we're brewing today here. Yes, yeah, so our brewing is almost like a darker, has a little brown, deep maroon, but more to the brown side with a even dark luster, that kind. So you will kind of look. See how dark like brown that leaf is? Expecting some. Mm, smell like coconut wood. Wow, you're right. Like with rock. Coconut oil with rock. Mm, it has another coconut sweetness. I wanted to show them the liquor too, if I can show it. Let me see if I'm. The liquor's a bit harder to focus on. It's far. I can get it. Just a little bit further. It's just the liquor, it's hard for it to focus. But you can see how deep, almost ruby orange, like a deep orange, beautiful liquor. Mm. And I brew like a four or five infusions. Yeah, we're know, well into the, we, brew we brewed a bunch while we were yeah. disconnected. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that part. Then talking about right. semi-fermented, the next paragraph we talked about is semi-fermented, which means uh, 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 partially oxidized. Um, right, so... Um, well, yeah, semi-fermented tea, and it's particular with its picking. I think they're talking about picking standard. It has a strict, uh, pretty good uh, picking standard. I was surprised about the such a precise fermentation level given when we're talking about the whole category. I yeah, it's a, um, <laughs> it means a lot of them are around 20%, oh, okay, like okay. what people would purchase on the market, right. like roughly 20%, not saying everybody has okay, to. Okay, okay. And which keep, keeps it to the greener side, right? They say like remains green tea, sweet, fragrant, and fresh. And the appropriate degree of fermentation can give it a strong fragrance of black tea. Mm. Uh, Having taken the two, oh, I don't know what this means. Having taken the two, mm -hmm. Oolong has one more preference. That one's a little bit weird, but I don't right. know. Right, it means it, it has uh, the freshness. Okay, uh, oh, I just wanna, bring this forward again because talking about the no matter what books or writers or whatever they have a time frame right right so the background is important this book is published around 2008 or something something like that that's about right so I think. Uh, that's the time when uh, Wulong has more uh, popularity gain more popularity in China but uh, mm. most of people you talk about Wulong is uh, talking about light oolong, it's a green, right. really fragrance. So that's how they uh, get into the market because China was dominated a green tea. If you, right. you know, it's too far like a rock tea. It wasn't uh, fully there yet at that time. So a lot of times so when we talk about oolong, and this book is aiming at uh, people who just new to tea. So this paragraph honestly is more focusing talking about green wool right right like a green tuaying or stuff like that so the the oxidation and based on at that time in the market most people have is around 20 percent and that kind of a green wool that has the green teas mm. refreshness right. that brisk and stuff but it has a more prominent aroma a little bit of richer taste almost uh, a right a little bit boring like of a black tea but it's really uh, predominantly on you the can feel side. that the tone is more like uh, introducing people to Ulo, mm -hmm. a new concept right so we borrow two familiar concepts of a uh, uh, green and right. black to introduce this tea yeah that reminds I just brought up the brew camp because right down there you see there's Chao Ren magazine cover mm. so there's a really good article that covers that whole uh, phenomena, right? In mm. 2019, uh, in the 2019 episode, uh, uh, version episode, because I'm on YouTube, I thought it was an episode of uh, Charen Magazine. So check that out. I'll put the link down below too, but mm. you can easily find it on our website. That's a, a really good, so that's where the book is coming from when they kind of lean towards the green and all. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we're having rock tea and I thought like, hey, don't forget me. Yeah. All right. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't be shy, you can still say all right. Oh, I will. Don't worry. Oh, right. Back to the book. 
All right, guys, we're working our way through uh, through the oolong tea intro. Mm. Cindy said, a beautiful tea, looking forward to brewing mine when I get home. Yes, nice. really delicious. Well, actually, Cindy, before we had all our connection problems, had mentioned she had been away for quite a oh, while. Right, so, right, uh, right. And that just reminded me when she said safe that. Safe drive home. We kind of missed that because the whole thing got disconnected. But yeah, have safe travels. Mm. And she also asked, what is an example of a greener oolong, uh, like we're mentioning? So that's a great question. Mm. And um, there's... Uh, Greener Taiwan yins would fall into that category. A lot of Taiwan usually mm. you see are right. greens. Uh, Bao Zhong, a lot of the Taiwanese mm -hmm. wulong mm -hmm. are green. And uh, Yongchun Fo Shou mm -hmm. uh, is that's, green. That's one of my favorite ones. Jiangping is a little Jiangping bit to the green Shui side. Xian is also green. That is my favorite uh, green wulong. This green wulong is quite literal in terms of you look at the dry leaves, like uh, mm. when you buy them, they're green. You mm -hmm. have that green look. Mm -hmm. So we call like I feel like here people call that green oolong as a, a subcategory of oolong. Right. Then you have darker oolong, which leaves are blackish, mm -hmm. uh, brownish, really dark color. May basically like a, a roasted and not roasted kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. If you want to check that out, you can head on over to our website and look at like the Young Chun Fo Cho dry leaf pictures. Sure. Show. Show. Young Chun Fo Show dry leaf pictures. Show means stinky in Chinese. So that's right. why we all, he often got show and show uh, mixed up. So every I time. got a bad habit of doing it as a joke and now it's kind of stuck with me and it's not good. Yeah. So go, go ahead though, if you want to see some examples of the, the greener oolongs versus um, darker oolongs, go ahead and pull up some pictures of the uh, Young Chun Fo Show on our website and then go ahead and head over to let's say Rogoy or any of the Wuyi rock teas are going to be definitely in the heavier zone mm -hmm. and if you want to look at our Taeguan Yin versus a lot of other Taeguan Yin out there mm -hmm. um, uh, pull up ours you'll notice ours are darker and they are more quote-unquote properly oxidized properly roasted and maybe look at some Taiwan Yuzu Longs or something but for now let's dive back in to the basic classification of Oolong tea Oolong tea of north of Fujian province, Wuyi rock tea, north of Fujian narcissus, Wuyi... Oh, these are tea types. I might, I might skip over this. This is just listing some regions. Mm -hmm. So Oolong tea north of Fujian province. Mm -hmm. Another region, Oolong tea south of Fujian province. Right. And this then they narrow out Guangdong and Taiwan for some reason and give examples of tea names accordingly. Right. I feel like it's a bit boring to read that out. What do you guys think? I think probably... You can check out the finished translation. And you can see there's a translation and not translation. Uh, mm. So I uh, just wanted to say, like uh, what we just uh, talked about, uh, green oolong and dark oolong, is I found it's more like a Western colloquial, like uh, rough uh, type that uh, we say that here in uh, English. Mm. Kind of a green oolong, darker oolong to help people who just get into oolong tea right. to uh, have a rough idea like they are quite different in terms of tasting profiles right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, more uh, here the classification the four types of oolong are more systematically divided with this uh, good root and a little bit more uh, academically recognized in China into these are official cat categorized oh these of four Regional yes. regional designations. Absolutely, because oh. uh, besides the region, they also have a connotation of a slight different making and their its own mini system. So, um, first one is the uh, main. This is really oolong. interesting, guys. This is um, this is cool stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> insider stuff, you know. Right. This is a Minbei. First one is a Minbei oolong in Chinese. Uh, again, so that's uh, the, oolong the, the, the tea north of Fujian. Yeah, link right. in uh, in the right. description. Open that. There's a pinyin official name. It's a Minbei oolong. Min is the short form of uh, Fujian province. Bei means mm. north. So the translation is right. Oolong tea of north of Fujian province. Mm. Uh, I just want to shoot in like. Mm. Um, why in the Finnish translation we went back to Mingbei Oolong Tea is um, just like with so many Japanese tea names and tea mm -hmm. regions, we just keep the Japanese name. Yo, 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 yo. For me, Football. for us, it's kind of weird. For some of these terms, we really think it's much better just to keep the pinyin, the Chinese name, Mingbei Oolong Tea, and just use that. It's yeah. it's tell and then you know okay that's north of Fujian and then that's good enough. 
uh, it's clearer, I think, and a little cleaner. Yeah, because mm. uh, like uh, many all, times yes. uh, you will notice what the book the book here in terms of T names and T turns is actually a lot of people are using that. Is if they can uh, do individual word translation, they always do individual translation. That if they cannot do individual character translation, they don't do. It's kind of a Crisscross and a random. Right, you mean even how how the translation ended up here? So yeah, zigzag. And see, iron and see, mercy, pinion. goddess. Iron mercy, goddess. Yeah, English. but Xilan is not uh, right? translate as a. Ben Shan. Yeah, those are not translated. Those mm. all have its own meaning in in terms yeah, of every yeah. single character, right? So, uh, we stick with when it's a T term, when it's a. Uh, a Certainly common a tea name. term names mm -hmm. we stick with the Chinese pinyin. Yeah. Maybe in bracket we say the meaning a possible word, the commonly mm -hmm. known English name. Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about this? Thing? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, because what of Mingdei and uh, Nandei. I think the other one is based on what uh, we yeah, no, 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 Minnan. Minnan. Then Minnan. So Ming mm. is the single word for uh, Fujian province. Mm. Every province have their one single word. Simplify. Sometimes it's not out of the characters of the province. Mm. Like uh, Dian is Yunnan, Dian Hong, Yunnan Black Tea. Mm. So Guangdong Wulong and uh, Taiwan Wulong, those uh, four types of Wulong, they are different in shapes, different in characters, and making they are its own mini system. Uh, and there are lots of uh, different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look, even just as we were speaking, Zach um, was wondering, is Iron Mercy Goddess equal to Te Guan Yin? And Alex, thanks Alex and welcome. Alex just popped in. Alex said yes, and that is right. Like, uh, and that's again why we stick with just the pinyin name, because it's, once it's mm -hmm. like, are you translating all of them, some of them? Yeah, I'd like them? to share a little story, which I, which I uh, stumbled across online as uh, uh, somebody was asking on some uh, uh, forum about uh, what is uh, Iron, Iron, Iron Buddha. Iron Buddha. Mm. Yeah, what was Iron Buddha? So then I was, uh, and everybody is chipping. Uh, probably this is an Iron Goddess, blah, blah, blah. But here is the thing Goddess and Buddha feels like a Buddha is a, a guy and Goddess is a a girl, mm -hmm. right? A boy and a girl, like uh, it could be Tie Luo Han vis a vis Tie Guan Yin, Guan, you know, Tie Luo Han. Luo Han is a more of a guy's image, which is also a T. Well, Tie Guan Yin is also, uh, Guan Yin is own, uh, a the girl, goddess. Mm -hmm. goddess image. So, with that kind of a name of uh, Iron Buddha, so I was thinking probably Tie Luo Han. Mm -hmm. But uh, eventually the guy figured out it was a Tie Guan Yin. So it's just about how you want to translate this uh, mm. God-ish uh, name. And it could be confusing. Of course, yeah, it, it obviously was. Like it was, yeah. even you it couldn't be figured out. Like you had to just yeah, go back right. to whoever picked it. Yeah. At a certain point it becomes almost arbitrary, right? How they mm. want to do that. Mm. Awesome. Did we miss any other comments? Just want to check it out. Example. No, we're all solid. Yes, I'm making some Tiguan from Ya Xinyuan. What is Ya oh. Xinyuan? I never heard of that. Uh, me either. It's probably a brand name. Mm. It sounds like more of a brand name. Cool. Yeah, and actually, I think we forgot to ask mm. because we were so um, connection stymied at the <laughs> right, beginning of the post. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you guys are posting. I think JS wasn't sure what to brew and then he decided to go with the Rogue Way. So um, mm -hmm. JS, how's your Rogue Way rocking and rolling? And uh, everybody else, let us know what's in your pot. I think Cindy's on the road, so she may not be able to brew. And uh, look at that, oh. uh, Reiner. I think I said that right. Reiner is drinking right, some yeah. uh, Taylor Han right now, which is totally what a coincidence right. and cool. Awesome, yeah, so shoot up questions, shoot up what you're brewing. If you've got some tasting notes, something hits you from your tea, mm -hmm. shoot it up in the comments, guys. We love to hear uh, how the tea is hitting you, and uh, that's what we're here for. And in the meantime, cool. sound effects provided by me. <laughs> uh, next section, the identification of good and bad oolong tea. I bet you guys are looking forward to this. This is, where, this is what I love about this book, actually. It's got... Uh, it takes you back to basics and mm -hmm. gives you really great, simple, great information about 
how to approach tea. Even if you're yeah. into tea for a while, you may have forgotten some of the de some of the simpler nuances. Sometimes the most basic things are sometimes the easiest to forget, and it's good to go back. So the identification of good and bad oolong tea, what we all love, high quality oolong. One appearance, iron mercy goddess strips are long, strong, circular, curved. Narcissus strips are fat and tight with distorted bars. Are you mind? <laughs> Two, color, sand green and green oily. Three, fragrance, flower fragrance. Four, soup, orange or golden, clear bright. Taste, mellow, fresh, flexible. Bottom of leaf, green leaves with red edges. That is, the veins and edges are red, other places are green, which is verdancy and yellow bright. Inferior oolong, appearance, strips are loosened and light. Color, dark brown, brown, red, iron color, and dry red. Fragrance, smoky snow, scorched flavor, grassy or other foreign odor. Soup, blue color, mm, we'll come to that later. Dark red and turbid, great word. Taste, <laughs> thin and bitter. Bottom of leaf, green area with dark, red area with dark. All right, let's unpack this, this is excellent. This is interesting. Yeah, I think, first, I don't know what Narcissus is. I don't know, because they've translated a tea name, I think. Shui Xian, okay, so that... I think they translate it as the plant, it's called Narcissus. Mm. Uh, some people translate that as a water sprite. Water sprite, I think it's I've heard, sprite. yeah. Shui, yeah, yeah. water Shui, and Xian is that kind of elf yeah. spread. Yeah. Yeah, a little sprite, sprite or an <laughs> elf or a... Uh, that kind of thing, so uh, depends on how people translate that, we call that Shui Xian. And, um, and take one yin, obviously. Yes. But they're giving us a sort of the, I think the dry leaf shape, what we should be looking for, right? Yes. Strives is trying to translate a T term called tiao su. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean stripes, even though in strips Chinese, is uh, okay. strips. Uh, in Chinese, if you don't know T, it sounds like we're talking because mm -hmm. tiao is a, a, like a, we're thinking about line shape, long shape stuff. But no, in T terms, tiao su means the look, the, the 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 shape of the leaves. Okay. Is that tight? Is that more loose and rough? Uh, so by tight, we just mean the um, like the rolling looks. The rolling, yeah. How mm. the the look of the leaves. I think that picture is a pretty good example. Is that something we can scroll up to and have a peek at? Mm -hmm. So let me bring on the see if the picture on the book is a decent scan. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is pretty tight here. I don't know if you can see my highlight. It's but really hard. It's to, hard to see, you, right? It's not just the book, and it's hard for people to say, "I can see." Oh, this is tight. This right, is loose. Right. Unless it's Huang Pian, it's a fully open because it's really mature, cannot be rolled. Right. Otherwise, you need some experience to know what is loose ah. and t uh, loose and fur in terms okay. of a T shape, mm -hmm. and that applies to the whole section about ah. colors, about curves. Those have to put in perspective of tea, you need some experience. Right, right. If I totally never see tea leaves and I look at them, honestly, right. they all look the, the same. Because I also had that right, right. page, right? When I just get into tea, I was like, I cannot tell all those rock tea leaves apart. Right. Everybody tastes the same, look the same, I cannot see they're different. But right. you, once you have experience and drink enough, it yeah, I think that comes naturally. back. Yeah, that comes back to sort of again early in the book when they were giving the tasting steps is don't if you're really into tea and you want to improve your identification and, and appraisal skills, uh, we got tons of videos that to help you with that. And especially, but most importantly, don't skip the step of observe the dry leaf. Take your time and observe the mm -hmm. uh, the brood leaf, the liquor color, the way the leaf unfurls. Um, and that's how you'll gain some experience. Mm. And of course, check out our videos because we help guide, you know, I don't say that just to be self-serving, but mm. also there's a lot of confusion out there and we try to clear that up about what right. works and what doesn't in those tasting videos. And uh, I think I'll just run through this sure. thing quickly uh, and uh, put, like, put aside the translation. So that uh, yeah. not lingering on each word in terms I, of people I agree. say that. I right? agree. It's more of an overall. Yeah. Uh, color in terms of color is a green ish color with the luster. Luster is the key word. Mm. 
uh, which kind of green depends on the tea. And you can see even around the rock tea, which uh, compared to, and ideally you compare, right? With it itself, sometimes you can see, oh, this rock tea is dark enough. But when you compare with the uh, other rock tea, you realize there are still sh different uh, mm -hmm. shades of a uh, dark green. Difference. Dark greenish brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aroma is oolong tea features a floral aroma. This is mm. very broad and accurate because it's a oolong tea. If you have to say one word for black tea, that's fruity, mm -hmm. right? And this right. is related to because how they are oxidized. Right. The oxidation level decides the general idea of that. But it's not saying every tea must have floral. Right. And, not, and again, every people's detection is different. So some course, people yeah. might say, oh, I don't think this tea has any floral, especially when it comes to rock tea, many people might right. not think about floral. Right, but we had, uh, we were talking about Hui Yuan Kang the other day, and that is a rock tea that has a gorgeous, it's not a booming floral, but it does well, have every that. good uh, rock tea has should to have, have that little floral. Mm. And then talking about liquor is orange, gold, different shades, uh, in general ranging that where the radiance bright radiance and clear clear is a word that needs to be discussed in oh. terms of the tea realm what is a clear a certain times people think clear is a like glass it not necessarily mean it's a good thing it's a word i try to avoid using when talking okay. about liquor with uh, people who are just into tea it's a slightly complicated term Right, because clear could be misunderstanding, and people taking some tea that is overdone, that is just clear with nothing in it, and it's right. not a good right. thing. Right, right, clear but empty. Yeah, so clear mm. is a key word that uh, needs a little bit more advanced uh, differentiation experience. A lot right. of times, I really think that people should forget about all this kind of little things. Just drink, and one day you <laughs> will all link together and just come to you. Right, it's a practice, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, sometimes just turn off the brain. You engage our senses. It's a way faster learning than force ourselves to abstract something mm -hmm. from. That's a like great point. Then talking about the taste, it has to be rich. It has to be complex. As you probably notice, it's mostly talking about mouthfeel. Flexible is an interesting word. I call that agile or what did I call that? Agile. I think you did that say kind agile, of right? Yeah, what it means is like it's uh, inflexible. It's a Chinese tea keyword is a huo, uh, which means uh, it doesn't uh, stay. Doesn't stay? No, it doesn't sound right. It mm. has to be. It's transforming. Uh, is that what you mean? Like uh, yes. it's a it's a. You know, here is the thing, just a, a really rough comparison, say coffee and tea. Oh, that's tea, a great one. after you drink, good ones become, your, besides the aroma and stuff, your mouth is uh, more uh, watering, mm -hmm. it's, uh, ha have a hint of a sweet or stuff. Right. While the coffee, oftentimes, with or without a cream, oftentimes afterwards, it's that coffee and turn acid. Like it feels you, you, you want mm. a gum or want something mm. to rinse that off and right. it's coated. So that's the kind of the extreme of not flexible, right. not agile. It stays and becomes stale right. while the other one is more Clean, like refreshing, a refreshing. It changes into something mm. pleasant. Right. Yeah. Then the brood leaf is talking about uh, a bottom of the leaf, talking that's about brood leaf. leaf. Yeah. Yes. And uh, key word here is a, <laughs> is a good sign, but it is also not necessary. Why? Because of the trend changes. All times so when we talk about oolong, what's a good oolong? It's a uh, uh, hong xiang bian, green leaves with red edges, right? But then there's a trend of people even smashing those leaves to get rid of any edges that has the color change. They want pure green. Because at that time, to push the tea to the market, they are trying to uh, match in green tea, you know, green oh, wow. leaves and stuff. There are many trends that really changes how, <laughs> what you will see in the market of the tea you buy. 
and uh, now uh, people come down a little bit, come back a little bit to mm. senses and uh, realize, okay, we don't need to smash in those uh, red leaves off. They throw that out of the wall and smash that off. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so you could uh, still see a little bit, but to really have the perfection of uh, green leaves and red edge is very, very rare. Mm. So don't obsess with that. It's the <laughs> ultimate rule. Right. 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 Let's head over to the uh, to the comments. Lots of uh, lots of stuff going on there. That's a great section, though. Just how to. Uh... All right. So, as we ask, people are shouting out what they're. Oh, brewing. cool! They're having some conversation about the teas. Yes. Yes. Brewing. Uh, so Cindy is brewing. Way to go in her hotel room. Brew anywhere. That's what we love. Dao wu ye. Is that uh, the oolong, the, the fenghuang oolong da wu ye or? Very floral. I'm not sure. Red. Possible and Alex oolong. is having a Taiwan, Taiwanese green oolong mm. as well. I guess uh, kind of in the orange range. I guess that's the oxidation level, Alex. It's a kind of an orange liquor. Mm. Nice. I shouldn't put my arm. Diesversified is working on a baihao oolong. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Taiwan Love and that. how strong today. Mm. Oh. And it is Oriental Beauty, they say. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Which oolong are you having, Alex? And Alex says it's a Baozhong oolong from Taiwan, but it's slightly more oxidized than most Baozhong. Mm. Cool. Sounds tasty. Ooh, another great one. And what producer is your Baihao oolong from? We're getting technical. Brass mm -hmm. tags. And um, flexible equals flavor changes from steeping to steeping. Mm, good question. Mm. So more of the, uh, I think it's no. more of the sip. In right. the sip. In the sip itself, the liquor is very flexible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it's hard to say think, those are Chinese. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're description work. And uh, I can give another example of uh, say, uh, puar, say Banjiang puar. Mm. Why is that so famous and uh, so uh, become such a reputation? Is because it's a uh, we call that a powerful, right? Ba qi powerful a uh, really uh, uh, that kind of thing uh, so uh, translated to common language is a bitter and astringent strong bitter strong astringent mm. but it's not the only place who has a strong bitter and strong astringent there are a subcategory of a poor tea just that plant itself is super bitter it's mm -hmm. almost undrinkable why are those no those teas not famous or anything it's because the Banjong's a bitter and astringent see changes very quickly in your mouth. It's yeah. almost like quick cleanup. It's sometimes. really hit on people mm. and then it changes. So mm. that means the potential. First it's a good material because it changes. It doesn't linger. It doesn't stay bitter forever. It doesn't right. mm, dynamic is a good word. Dynamic yeah. is a great good one. Word. See? That's yeah, what we that's love really helpful, guys, you see? Yeah. Sometimes dynamic in the mouth, right? It's yes. dynamic right in the mouth Absolutely. during the sip. It's really a beautiful and I th I really think a unique thing of a unique experience that tea brings because mm -hmm. of that complexity. Mm -hmm. Um it's not something you know commonly. So that's taste. really helpful because my mind was set on one word and it's hard to expand and trying to explain, but dynamic is a really good word. So, um, yes, really good. Yeah, that. Sorry, I read what? backwards to Zach's okay, comment okay. when he said drinking tea is very therapeutic, but smashing tea is extremely therapeutic. <laughs> or I maybe misquoted him, but that was the spirit. I just yes, couldn't yeah. couldn't help but laugh when I read that. So it must be, yeah. But it's um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> and then where were we there? I'm not sure the batches. Oh, oh but there was a question: right. which producer was, sure. and they're not sure, which is totally reasonable. Alex, okay, is it good? And Cindy says, uh, mm -hmm. I think you are so right about the need to drink and compare teas to build experience and understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with concepts like this dynamic, mm -hmm. the dynamic flavors in your mouth. And um, I recently took a class, yeah. she continues, where we drank three mystery denzong and tried to identify from five choices. Yes. Fun. That's really, really yeah. Really fun, but yeah, the, just... Honestly, if you want to learn about tea, that's the way to go. Like mm -hmm. we always for our tastings, for even for him when he first started, oh, side by side tasting. Yeah. It's always side by side tasting. Side by side. Individual ones mm -hmm. are too hard for people to 
remember that right. nuance. Right. Yeah. yeah. You could put a couple take one yins on the table um, and get like a, oh a good point for that would be the um, our master collections. Uh, we have a master process with dark tea and a master cultivar for oolong. So we pick out teas with as as few differences as possible and isolate for the dark tea one process for the for the oolong tea. We isolated cultivars, so you mm. taste those side by side. You really, really, I can tell you that was a great thing you did for me. Accelerate your uh, understanding. So yes, yeah, it's a bit, it's a lot to brew, but it's fun uh, and really accelerating. Absolutely. And then diversified says it's going down very well. I'm on the fourth steep. Nice. I only got, I only got one right, but it helped me build understanding yeah mm -hmm. yeah in the end it doesn't really matter how yes. many right answers you get it's all about the experience and just adding yeah. adding experience to your error toolbox and error, and learn. error and learn yeah 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 ever I think it's pretty well understood that failure is a better teacher than than, uh, than yes. success and it's not about right or wrong mm -hmm. it's about how you get to that mm -hmm. answer mm -hmm. and practice and that's that's the comments yeah so that's I think we might have I kind of uh, might have we might have finished. I'm gonna head I back to the book so. to check. Yeah, we had the inferior, but I think that's the opposite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. We kind of went into what's the good thing. So uh, I didn't want to linger too I much. I think you're on right. This. Cover the whole section because this once, is right? really broad to give people a really rough idea. You don't have to. It's really hard uh, to. And the finished translation is better translated yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and it's really hard these. for people to just. Uh, you know, have a reference and see, oh, based on this chart, I think this is a good or a bad wulong. It's a, yes. It's an idea, not as practical as, not us, just not as practical, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, to really help with individuals because there are yeah. such a, uh, such a, tasting is the way to go to get good at identifying. of a tea and they're, their their look could be so similar it really needs experience to know those are keywords that abstract out of years of right. experience i don't know like because i feel that myself mm. when i started it i learned from my mom and other team masters who have been years right. like uh, our uh, green tea the guzhu zisun master he was those people uh, oh. working at the frontier old times in the 60s in the 60s, the 50s, or those like uh, uh, in the factory time, he uh, always telling me that uh, working when it's tea season, he works like every night because the uh, evening till the night, all the tea farmers bring back the leaves that they plucked, and based on the grading of the your mm -hmm. uh, your plucking standard and uh, where you you get this tea they pay them differently. Sometimes right. it's say five cents uh, a jing, or uh, whereas in yours it could be one dollar. And sometimes there are farmers who bring the, uh, the grand, the, grand the, the, the plant tea, and they say this is high mountain tea. He's like, I, I, I do this every day, and you think, no, you're just a five cents tea. It's not one dollar tea. Like, because right. they are so, they kind of have to get good at identifying. Yeah, they right? just look at the leaf. They know if it's grown on certain altitude or is that a grow on mm -hmm. plant. They just know that, like in my early times, whenever I hear those, I feel like it's like magical. Right. Like, Absolutely. how could you I know totally that? Agree. You know, like they're just old leaves or, and you can know the difference. Yeah, or plucked during rain. Right. And they and can taste that. It's yeah, crazy. And they try to tell me like uh, how I was trying to learn about uh, cultivar differences, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this cultivar looks rounder or this tip is this. Everything mm -hmm. is, how should I say? Nuance. Like uh, not only oh. nuance, but when I just make notes of, uh, oh, say, Tie uh, Guanyin is a rounder shape. Uh, Shui Xian mm -hmm. is a longer shape, uh, but when I would look at leaf, it's still useless for me. I still don't know, right? But I notice when I'm in the field uh, plucking right. for one day, seeing all this stuff, at least I know in this field how many cultivars they are. I see them, I know they're yeah. different cultivars. Yeah, you need that contact. You really need mm -hmm. to have the experience. So yeah. I don't linger too much in terms of those textbook stuff. And there's no silver bullet. You yeah. can't fast Nothing forward. Not that we're just drinking tea, right? Most of yeah. our, yeah. I think that you guys are just drinking tea, learn a little bit, not necessarily has to be so uh, mm -hmm. specific. Right on. 
So uh, I noticed that um, Cindy said when we were talking about the master, she said she gr did get the master set, mm, and she really nice. liked that as a teaching thing. And Alex says, "失败是成功之母." That's the Chinese saying. That's what we always say. Uh, failure uh, is the mother of success. I yes. Don't know how oh yeah, we have a direct yeah. translation of that. Oh, yeah. it, that's okay. you. That's that's what it is. Failure is the mother of success. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, guys. So mm -hmm. that was a. Uh, it was a rough start with our connection issues, but we did squeeze in the tea trivia. We will continue to enjoy our little warm up with some tea trivia. I think it's fun. I think it's light. I think uh, I love doing these uh, Sunday tea books. This is uh, oh, the camera stuck in. Probably my favorite. Um, one of my favorite live sessions. We've got lots. The December schedule is coming out soon, mm -hmm. so we've got tons of stuff planned for you for December and a really cool surprise coming up on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Mm, um, next Thursday. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. I'll give you guys an advanced notice to pop over to our website. You'll get a pop up or down in the footer. You can join our newsletter. That's probably the best way to hear what's going to happen as quickly as possible. Um, so that's just for you guys who joined and stuck with us to the end. Um, Cindy says thanks for a great session have a great week you yeah, guys too. You too thank you thank guys you for, for sticking with us yeah. have a great week and guys until next time keep steeping, keep steeping.